Hey guys, welcome back to the Hello World Guy and in this video we are going to make our game look prettier. So let's get started quickly. Alright guys, so you can see I have got my Unity project here and first of all, the first thing I want to do is uh, uh, make our ground and uh, other things look a little better because currently they don't really look that good. So how can we make them look better? Now uh, if we can do is add a great looking texture and material to it. So how can we do that? Well, uh, of course you can create your own texture if you want using a photo editing software like Photoshop. But uh, uh, I'm going to give you a link uh, to the Unity Asset Store and the Unity Asset Store is a great place for getting free and paid assets and it's, uh, it's a really great place especially for prototyping but nothing stops you from making full games using those assets. So anyways, uh, there is a cool asset called the Grid Blocks Prototype Material and I have given you a link to those assets in the description of this video. Uh, and uh, what you can do is uh, just go to that website and then you can visit the official Unity Store website and you can uh, just uh, uh, click the Add to My Assets button in order to add it to your personal assets. Once you have done that, inside of Unity what you need to do is go under Window and then Package Manager. Once it loads up, go to My Assets and it will start fetching your assets and once it has done that, you can see they all of those appear and you can choose any asset you want and then add it to your project. So uh, what I'm going to do is select the Gridbrox prototype materials package as you can see this is that package and I have added it and then uh, I have already downloaded it and uh, so you need to download it if you haven't done it already. I can also re-download it as you can see but I'm going to only import the package. Okay after I've got this in uh, I've selected import then I should get this uh, whole uh, and this interface where I can select which folders I want to install. I just need to install everything and hit import. And then it should start importing and uh, it doesn't take long. And as you can see, uh, now I have got here a folder called third party. If I open that up, inside of it, a couple, uh, little bit deeply nested, you have got the grid box prototype material folder in which you have got a material folder. Now here you have got three folders, you need to select the standard one. And here you can you have got a bunch of materials that you can apply to your objects. For example, I can take this blue material and apply it, and as you can see, it looks a lot better. So I'm going to just leave it like that. You can also apply a material to your player and uh, to your enemy as well. You can, but of course we are animating that, therefore we cannot apply uh, the material. And as you can see, the game already looks a lot better. Alright, so with that done, this is pretty good, and now we can start adding the next thing which is the bullet hit particle effect. Now I really wanted to add that and uh, and you might be wondering how exactly are we going to do that. Now in order to do that we are going to use a system called the particle system. Now uh, the basic idea of a particle system is that we have got uh, separate meshes or uh, sprites which are called particles and then they are spawned randomly with different colors, attributes etc and different speed uh, at different times and the particle system continues for a limited time or it just continues forever. It, uh, there are a lot of things we can change in it and particle system can quickly get very complicated and you can make some really beautiful effects with them. But we are going to start with something really simple. So in order to get started just go ahead in here and right click in the hierarchy create a new go under effects and particle system. So as soon as you do that you should see these weird um, this small kind of thing appearing. Uh, now, uh, I, um, uh, what you should see is that now, uh, what you should see is that we have got a particle system here, and this is a, the actual component of the particle system. And here, you've got a bunch of settings, uh, quite a lot of settings actually. But what I'm going to do is select this duration and change this to something like 0.1. But if I do that, then you should uh, then, oh, and if I just restart the thing and I turn off looping because. And if I play, then you can see nothing appears because it's too sh uh, short time to actually make anything appear. So I'm just going to make a one second particle. Now, of course, this doesn't look like a bullet puff or anything of that sort, but we are going to make it look like that uh, soon. But first, I should get, uh, I think we should program the logic that will actually spawn this object. Now, uh, how are we going to do that? So, of course, I'm going to open a Visual Studio here, and this is our shooting script. Now in here uh, we are basically uh, saying that it was attacked. I'm going to re actually let me just check. Okay, I'm going to remove this debug.log and this as well. 
Okay, alright, I'll let this stay because it gives us a health. I will remove that one. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is uh, just check if the um, basically we need to spawn a something at the uh, exact location where the hit uh, happened. So for of course we want to know what we want to spawn. So for that I will create a game object called effect and oh, oh right sorry <laughs> okay and in here uh, we can use a function called instantiate which well it creates a uh, it creates an object and for that we need to give it an original object and then we need to give it a mm, we can give it a transform which is the parent but of course we can't do that uh, because we have a position and you, we can also give it a police position by the way so for that we can hit dot collider dot transform dot position now the, uh, and for the rotation of this, uh, what is the? Okay, we want to use, we want it to be rotated uh, at the direction of the face. So, for example, if we, uh, if we, all right, let's compile. So, for example, if it hits uh, this enemy at here, right here, then the face is pointing this direction, and that's the direction this particle system should be spawned at uh, with the rotation. So in order to do that, it's it's very really simple actually. We can use a function in the quaternion class called quaternion dot loop rotation. Now all we need to do is supply this with a vector three, and it automatically looks at uh, gives us a rotation that is looking at that vector. So in order to do that, uh, and the uh, vector we wanted to supply is it is going to be hit dot normal. The, the normal vector gives us the direction of the face. Now with that, if I go under Unity, let it compile. Then we can um, all right, and now I can select my uh, player, and here we can give it a game object which is going to be our effect. Now we could have dragged this effect here directly, but uh, I would actually not like to do that because uh, well, while this effect is uh, it's, it's fine, I mean of course we can add it, but I don't want it to actually stay in the scene. So and of course we wanted to use again and again. So how can we use it through multiple across multiple levels as well? Well, it's actually really simple to do that. What we can do is just take this particle system and uh, drag it and drag it to our uh, project folder. And what that does is create something called a prefab. Now we can use this prefab uh, anywhere and we can add it inside of here, which means uh, which is pretty good. And which means this is basically a reusable asset. So if I rename this to bullet. Uh, hit effect and then maybe uh, I will just put it in another folder create a new folder called prefabs and just drag this inside and then uh, and then we actually don't need one in the scene so I can just drag this directly in the effect now at this point if I hit play it shouldn't really work work perfectly because, uh, because it's not going to do so so if I go here and I shoot the cube then it seems like it's working the, the particles are appearing and they are of course they don't look like a bullet effect but, uh, uh, but they are appearing and if I shoot this then it's also appearing here but uh, if you can notice if I shoot here then it's not appearing instead it's appearing at the center if I shoot here then it still appears at the center if I shoot here it still appears at you know at this point and uh, you also notice if I it doesn't matter where I shoot the cube it still appears so if, even if I shoot this at the corner here then you can see that the uh, effect appears at the center and why is that happening now of course this is uh, really easy to figure out because uh, when we are actually uh, if I open up visual studio you can see in the code we are using the hit collider transform position which happens to be the center of the position and if I select this object you can see that this where the point where the arrows are appearing this is the center and mm, by that definition the point we are hitting is correct we this, this is, there is nothing wrong so uh, we need to of course replace this code now uh, what uh, in order to get the exact point of the hit we can just use hit dot point which is a which returns a vector 3 so this is a vector 3 which gives us the position of the exact point of the hit is not the not the location of the object that the hit um, happened on, but instead the exact position of the hit itself. So if I play, then you should it should work. So now you can see wherever I shoot, the uh, a particle effect appears there. So yeah, that's working. And the next thing we need to do is of course change the particle effect so it actually looks like a particle uh, effect, like a bullet hit effect, because currently it of course doesn't look like that. All right. So now we are going to make our particle system look a little better. 
So before I do that, one thing I want is that this this cube here is kind of annoying me to see that it's white. So I'm going to go under the material folder and then just uh, drag this red material onto this as well. Um, I cannot. All right, uh, the camera is getting in the way. Uh, so I'm going to drag this material in here. And yeah, that looks better. It's actually not red. Or, okay, so you can see it's, it's there. So anyways, uh, now we can get to act the actual particle. So in order to do that, I'm going to go under my prefab folder and open up this prefab by double clicking on it. This changes our scene view. We can go back anytime by clicking this back button. And now you can see we are in the particle mode and we can see our particle uh, pretty well, which is, which is great. And if this is what we had before, as you can see, the uh, when I hit the play button, then these these kind of things appear and they kind of uh, go up. <laughs> so that's that's pretty good, I guess. Um, but uh, of course, it doesn't look like a bullet sheet effect at all. So in order to do that, we are going to uh, handle these settings. Now, of course, there are a lot of them and they look kind of overwhelming. But uh, you don't need to know all of them, and quickly you can create, you can learn them one by one, and it's really easy to create some great particle systems with this. Uh, and, uh, and the only thing that limits you is your own creativity. So in order to start, what I'm going to do is, as you can see, it's currently a bit too long. Uh, you know, they are kind of going for way too long. So I'm going to go under this enemy hit effect uh, particle system, and then I'm going to change the start lifetime which determines how long our particles will live to something like 0.1 seconds. Now if I change the duration of the whole particle effect to something like 0.2 seconds you can see only a single particle appearing. I'm also going to ch uh, change the size down to something like 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.5 by going into this start size and changing it to 0 0.5. And now if I hit play you can see that uh, only one particle appears which is relatively small. Now in order to make more particles appear as a burst we are going to value well, the burst. So if I go under this emission tab here, then you can see we have got uh, an area for burst and if I hit plus, then we uh, get uh, a new uh, burst basically and I can change the count, maybe I can have 50 particles and if I hit play, you can see that this is well a burst. Now of course, uh, our particle system is currently too short, so they don't really move that far. So what I'm going to do is go under the start speed and I'm going to uh, make it, so I'm going to make it, you can make it something uh, like 10 and then it will move for a longer time but what I'm going to uh, do is actually uh, to prevent them from moving all at once as you can see they are kind of uh, following a similar path I'm going to go under the start speed and then I'm going to go under this option this drop down and I'm going to change this to be a random between two constants now I can give it a value like 5 and 10 and they will move randomly between that I can make it even like 2.5 and 10 in which case you can see it's a little bit more randomized and looks better so if I play yeah it's it's a little hard to notice but it is there if i change this to 15 maybe you can see it better all right so 2.5 and 15 you can play around with any of these values uh, to and adjust them to your liking so now i'm going to go under and now of course you can see that the particles are kind of too spread out so i'm going to go under this shape tab here and you can see this is a cone now uh, it, it's fine and this kind of shows you where your particles will go so if i increase the lifetime then you can see they kind of go exactly in this pattern. Uh, so I'm going to set the lifetime back and restart. Okay, that works. So now what I'm going to do is go under this angle and then I'm going to change this angle to be 0 degrees, which will change this into a perfect cylinder. Now I can adjust this radius property to adjust how large or small my effect it is. So I'm going to make it something like that, uh, 0 0.4. If I hit play, you can see that's what it looks like. And I'm pretty happy with this as a basic effect. Now, of course, this lacks color. To add color, we can go under the start color property and make it something like a reddish color. Now, uh, if I make it red and then just pure red and I hit play, you can see it's, it's red. But I would like to add a little bit of randomness to it. So I'm going to go under start, uh, I'm going to go under this drop down and then choose random between two colors. And in this, we I'm going to choose a orangish color. Okay, now if I play, then you can see we have got a little bit of randomness in the color. Now this is a pretty good effect, and if I hit play, then you can see it looks looks pretty good. Uh, the effect is looking pretty uh, pretty pretty uh, awesome, I guess. And you can adjust this to your liking. Maybe it's a little too large for you. 
or uh, you know you want to adjust it or maybe you uh, you like a more of a realistic looking um, uh, effect with some grayish color instead of this red thing that we have put up but I kind of like this idea and you can of course change the settings yourself to match your preferences and as you can see you you can do any pretty much anything you want with the particle system it's a really powerful system so that this is pretty much it for this video so I would still like to show you a little problem and a fix to that of course so if I if I hit play uh, while I'm out of the prefab then you can see all of the objects that are in our hierarchy as you can see if I hit play then we kind of spawn this enemy hit effects clone here and if I hit, uh, keep shooting then you can see that these effects keep getting spawned and even though these have ended they still are there they are not like disappearing which is totally wrong mm, this is a little, little waste of memory I mean none of these effects exist uh, anymore I mean they are they are not playing but we still have got them so how can we fix that now what I'm going to do is go under uh, my um, particle system and here in, in here you can see we have got a stop action here which is currently none if we change that to destroy and I hit play also if I just exit out of this then uh, what you can see is that if I shoot then that clone appears but it immediately disappears as soon as it uh, is finished uh, playing so that's that's pretty much it for this video and I think it looks pretty good so one thing I would still like to show you you can see that we have got our player shadow here now for some reason if you don't want that because you cannot see the player I really like having the shadow but if you don't want the shadow what you can do is select both your capsule and your cube uh, this uh, sunglass thing at the same time and you can go under the mesh renderer component and turn off cast shadows so that would stop it from adding any shadows to the uh, environment but of course I do want it to have shadows so I can I'm going to turn that on and uh, yeah that's that's pretty much it for this video and in the next video we will actually add a gun model because currently of course we don't actually have a physical gun and then some sound effects as well so I will see you in the next video and bye